Let me tell you a quick story. I lost my job due to the pandemic. COVID is a bastard. You know, go better for COVID. After the pandemic, I was looking for a new job. I applied to 157 job openings. These are job offers that I felt and I thought met with who I am and the kind of professional services that I offer. So I knew that I qualified. 157. Note that number. Out of 157, only 20 people gave me a yes. Either they called me or they emailed me. Right? Out of the 20 who mailed me with a yes or called me with a yes, only three of them booked me for interviews. I gave the three interviews my best shot. Only two of them gave me a job offer. Right? Out of the two job offers, I had to consider option A and option B. Then I picked one. So I went from 157 applications to 20 yeses to three interviews and then two job offers and then one job. Let's do the percentages. The jobs that I applied to were 157. That's 100%. The people who said, oh, good one. They looked at my CV. They did this and did that were 20 which is 13% of the 100. 87% said no, that's what it means. So 87 out of every 100 that I applied to were no's. Only 13 said yes. Now, out of the 13, I got only three interview offers. The one that said, okay, you know what? Apart from saying a yes, can we book you for an interview? Only three. So I had 1.3% of all the applications that I sent out interviewing me. Out of the three interviews that I did, I got rejected again from one, two actually gave me offers, and then I had to choose. In the end, my choice of one job is 0.64% compared to the number of jobs I applied to. So if you put one over 157, that's what it gives you. Rejection is a crazy thing. It can be sad, it can be painful, but ultimately you have to manage it and that's exactly what this video is about I'm on my own broken alone I feel the rain crashing down all around this empty town we're searching for the lost and found but you don't care you're unaware keep moving like the scars aren't even there it's in the air how do you manage rejection I think rejection stems from an economic fact that human wants are insatiable. Another economic fact that establishes rejection is that oftentimes demand is always higher than supply, which means when you want something, when you need something, usually the thing you need is in short supply. So it is practically impossible for it to get to everybody who wants it. Which means some people would have it, some people won't have it, which is rejection. Now, you need to find a way to deal with rejection because apparently it's a part of life. And if you are a part of this community, this is a community where we talk about fellowships, scholarships, admissions, jobs, Jackpot ships, which is migration from your country, you have to think about rejection and you have to manage it. I'm going to be sharing with you now 10 solid tips to manage rejection. Number six is my ultimate, all best tip to managing rejection. You are soon going to find out why. First and foremost, guys, shout out to Maggie Wangyu from Kenya who actually specifically requested me to do a video about this. Maggie, I love you, I appreciate you. Now, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is MD Tiamiu. On this channel, you are going to find the best tips, messages and advice and guidance and coaching for everything, fellowships, scholarships, jackpotships and experiences that help you discover Africa abroad. Do not forget that you can always make a request for something around these topics in the comment section and I always read 
my comments. I always look out for your request. So make a request about something you're working on or something you want me to teach you, something you want me to delve on, and I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Now, going into the tips, I'm going to be sharing 10 tips with you. 10 fantastic tips. Some of them you already do, some of them would be new. For those of them you don't do yet, make sure you make a note and try to incorporate them. Again, disclaimer, you may not be able to apply every of the tip for every of the rejection you are going through. But best bet is to pick what works and make sure you find a way to incorporate all 10 as you proceed. If you like this video, anything at all about it, make sure you hit that like button so it gets recommended to other people, right? Now, if you're not part of this community yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button now and hit the notification bell even harder. One other thing you can do to help us grow this community is to share this video with someone who may just be going through rejection. You can actually save a life. Now, I'm going to get into the tips one after the other. Let me know again which of these tips works best for you, which of them have you used in the past, which of them are you going to use moving forward. Tip number one, acknowledgement. You need to first acknowledge that rejection is a fact. Like I said in the beginning of this video, make sure you mentally prepare yourself that this is not a do or die affair. There are two things you gain from acknowledgement. First is it helps you to solidify your strategy. When you know that you have a chance to be rejected, you want to prepare better. You just want to don't go about and do it anyhow, right? So it helps you with your preparation. And number two, it helps you to respond better because an enemy revealed cannot do you any harm. When you already know that something is coming, it wouldn't catch you unawares. So acknowledgement is actually a very, very good tactic towards managing rejection. When you acknowledge it from the beginning, before it comes. For example, in my case, one, five, seven job applications. I knew that no matter how good my CV is, no matter how brilliant I am, I know that there could be one person who the organization prefers over me. So I always see my rejections coming. It helps me to solidify my approach towards the company or towards the scholarship or towards the fellowship. Number two, when it eventually happens, I would easily be able to manage it, laugh over it and move to the next one rather than being totally surprised and shocked. I am never shocked by rejection, never ever. From today on, never be shocked by your rejections. Your rejections should be seen before they happen. <music> Tip number two, to avoid rejection or to better manage rejection. First is you need to understand the assignment and do some fact finding. So let's say you are applying for a fellowship or a scholarship or you are trying to migrate to another country jackership you need to understand the assignment what document do they want you to submit what do they want you to write how do they want you to write it when does the application close when you don't understand the assignment and you just do what you think you put yourself at a higher risk of being rejected so when you understand the assignment you are already dealing with rejection even before it happens. Another one is for you to actually fact find. These people you are dealing with, these scholarship bodies, what is their eligibility criteria? What is the pass rate? How many people that have applied out of a hundred would be taken? So if you have a 20% chance, don't go and think, ah, you have a 90% chance because that is what actually gives your rejection weight. When you think, ah, no, this one is a short one, this is for me. But unfortunately, you only have a 5% chance. So understand the history of the people you're dealing with. Apart from the assignment of what they require you to do, do they have a special preference for people like you? Or do they have a bias against you? So let's say, for example, you're applying for a particular scholarship and they're only looking for people from Kenya who are in Kenya. 
Now, you are also from Kenya, but you are no longer in Kenya. You are living in China or Australia. You should know that somehow, they would prefer to choose a Kenyan that is based in Kenya than a Kenyan that is out of the country because they probably think you don't need that scholarship. So, you need to understand ahead of time what are the preferences that these people you are applying to have because it's going to definitely play out and that helps you to prepare better and also to manage your rejection. So when the rejection hits you, it wouldn't be a surprise. You wouldn't be shocked. You wouldn't be taken off your feet. you just be like, well, I really didn't stand a chance. And then it would be easier for you to congratulate whoever was chosen or understand why they judged you the way they judged you. Tip number three, defeat inertia. Now, you can think about rejection so much that you don't do anything. Now, a lot of people would look at an opportunity, look at a beautiful program and they will not apply because they are afraid of being rejected. Never do that. In fact, the only way to make rejection win is for you to not even take a step. So make sure you take a step. And when you're rejected, take even more steps. That's exactly why this video is being made. You see, when you walk a thousand kilometers in the wrong direction, you are better than somebody who hasn't taken any step at all. You're asking why? I'll tell you. When you walk in the wrong direction, one day you eventually find out you're in the wrong direction. When you make your way back to ground zero, where you started from, whoever you meet there, you are still better than that person because they have no experience. So you are not starting from scratch. You are starting from experience. So it's better to do something badly and know what doesn't work than not do anything at all. Do not let rejection weigh you down. So make sure every time you beat that spirit of inertia, that spirit that wants you to just sit down there because you could be rejected or because you have just been rejected. I have a quote and you can put this next to my name where I say that I prefer to die with a thousand memories than with a million thoughts. I prefer to die with a thousand memories than with a million thoughts. I just don't want to have an idea in my head. Or, oh, I could have applied. Oh, I could have done that. Oh, I could have gone there. I want to try to go and be rejected. That is a memory for me to keep than for me to just hold on to the thought forever and ever and do nothing about it. If you want to manage rejection and deal with it, you must break off inertia. You have to apply. You have to keep applying. Tip number four, keep a record of your steps. Now, when you are applying for an opportunity or you are approaching a program, every major step you took, make sure you document it. What answers did you provide to those questions? How did you approach the scenario-based circumstances they threw at you? How did you perform at the interview? Keep a record of every major thing. Did you talk to a mentor? Do you have you know, a record of your interaction with a mentor? Keep a record. And this is going to help you in three ways. First, it's going to help you trace back your step. In case you get rejected, you can better analyze at what point did you go wrong? Oh, was it when you applied? Did you apply late? Oh, was there a part where you're supposed to feel you thought it was optional, but that part was compulsory, but the system let it go. So you didn't know it was wrong. So when you keep a record, you are able to analyze and break down where your rejection came from. Thereby, you can do better when you try the next time. The second point is that when you keep a record of your steps in the light of rejection, you are able to teach other people. So tomorrow morning, if you want to guide someone how not to fail the way you did, you can show them the things you did, whether you made it or not, it's always good, right? So you can always refer to the note you took, the kind of preparation that you made. It's always very good. The third advantage of this tip is you will always have memories. Imagine you turning 60 and you just found a paper in your house and then it turns out to be 
a letter that you randomly wrote when you were applying for a scholarship when you were 25 years old. It definitely will make you laugh or make you proud of yourself because you will have come a long way. You are a winner, right? So whether you are rejected by that opportunity right now, it means nothing. Now, take a picture of yourself when you are struggling with the application. Keep little, little memories and tiny details of that process and you will turn out to be very proud of yourself that you actually tried. In fact, in the end, you may have drifted into some other thing, but by looking at those pictures and those memories, you'll be like, oh my God, look at my days when I was trying to be a football player. I didn't make the team, but these are the things I've done. So those memories will be refreshing and they will be inspiring to your future self. So remember, tip number four, keep a record of the steps you are taking. Tip number five have a response plan. Now, rejection is a fact. Now that you know it, every time you are applying to an opportunity, have a response plan. And what do I mean by this? Think about what you would do in case you don't get selected. So you have applied for this grant opportunity that is $25,000 and your hope is so high. So what if you don't get the grant money? Or what if you get the grant money but they only give you 12,000 out of the 25? Would you stop your foundation work? Would you stop helping the community? You need to already think about what you would do next in case it doesn't come. So you have to be very clear about your roadmap. First and foremost, you need to think about what you would do to fill the time. The very first time the rejection is slapped on your face, it's actually very hard. Everybody goes through it. So before it happens, think about what you would do. Would you watch a movie? Would you go out on a date with yourself? Would you do something? Just think about it ahead of them. So when it happens, you just activate your plan. Another thing you need to also do is you can put a review session with a mentor when the rejection happens. If I don't get this opportunity, I would book a time to speak with a mentor of mine. And meanwhile, for those of us who don't know, Mentorship is a walking, talking relationship with a human being who has your time, who has booked a time for you on their own calendar. I mean, you can watch videos online, you can connect to information, but you don't become a mentee until there's the handshake of you being able to talk and get reasonable feedback from who you call your mentor. But that's a topic for another day. So would you want to review this process with your mentor because some opportunities will not even tell you what you did wrong they'll just give you this beautiful message we are sorry you know or thank you for applying and leave you like that so you may not even know what you did wrong part of the plan apart from having time fillers and booking a review session is also to have similar very good opportunities that you will now focus on so if this opportunity doesn't work which other ones would you consider Usually when you put all your eggs and all your attention in one basket, it makes rejection even more powerful and more painful. So part of your rejection response plan, RRP, is what you will do immediately you get the rejection because it can actually trigger you to start to feel sad or sorry, you know, or feel less than yourself. So what would you do with time? Number two is how would you review what has happened in case they don't even give you a detailed feedback. Usually, they just send out one blank email to 5,000 people. Sorry, we didn't pick you. And that usually is not enough. So you need, if that opportunity is important to you, you need to book a time with a mentor and say, you know what, I applied for this. So they will look at what you said, how you said it, when you did it, and probably be able to help you with insight on how to do it better. Number three is you need to already think about other opportunities that you can now shift your attention to so that the rejection doesn't have the best part of you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm.